Right, uh, good morning, lovely wet Amsterdam morning. Uh, I'm going to, uh, we're due to kick off in a few moments, so I'm just going to uh, hold fire and uh, just finish getting myself uh, set up. And then we're going to do a little, a little review of uh, what we did last week um, with the colour technique for this. So I'm just going to work this through. It's drying out a little bit quick at the moment, so uh, I'm going to use my, my wonderful friend here. Oh, there we go. Look, the numbers are coming in. Fantastic. I didn't have to wait quite so long. We're already a minute early. All right, so uh, good morning. My name is John. I am the Global Education Manager at Elgon Cosmetic. Hey Lou, thank you very much for joining. Uh, this is the second Facebook Live for our iconic look of gentle energy for the summer called Authentic Blonde. So today, we uh, last week we did the, the colour technique. Uh, this week we're going to be focusing in on their haircut. Very easy, very quick, very, very salon friendly. Uh, just to, have, to just do a quick recap of the, the, the whole inspo behind it. This is Gentle Energy. So this is really the, the inspiration for the summer. Uh, so it's all about you know, a rebirth, being fresh, beautiful, uh, very simplistic, you know, working with a beautiful palette of different tones and really perfect uh, for going into the summer. Okay, and then here are some of the iconic images uh, from this particular look, just to give you a bit of an idea. Just a quick recap of the colour. Uh, the inspo behind the colour was taken from the 70s and it's this idea of a colour that is kind of worn in. It's done but it's not too done. And what we wanted to do was to do a reinterpretation of a classic highlight. So what we did was we took a classic technique, the full head of highlights, which is roughly around an hour and a half, and we wanted to cut it down to around 45 minutes. So what we did was a back-to-back -back highlight technique using a freehand technique. And then uh, with the areas that are left out, we did a, a, like a balayage of sorts. So you've got this kind of build-up of blonde. Blonde through the entirety of the head, but more of a build-up through the lengths and the ends. Hey, Oni. All right, so and as the colour dries, you're going to see the result much, much better. Um, coming back to the colour, you can see what we did last week in uh, the video on the Connect by Elgon YouTube channel. But just very quickly, we used a brand new product called uh, Eyeblonde Freehand. Uh, it's one of our two brand new decolorants. Uh, this is designed exclusively for freehand colour techniques, enriched with a technology called AC Oil Complex. So this works as a cosmetic ingredient during the lightening process. Um, and what it does is it, it really helps um, kind of remove the frizziness and the fluffiness while giving me absolute control when I'm working. This was used first last week. Um, it's mixed one to two, can lift the hair up to seven levels. And we did this last week alternating between 20 volumes and 30 volumes Elgon Oxy Cream. After that, we washed it off and then we toned the hair. We filled the hair back in with Imagea. This is part of our Elgon Green product portfolio. And this was done as a toner. It's a coloring gel, so it's very nice and light to work with. The luminosity is incredible and the shine is fantastic. So what we did was we worked with three quarters of 10 and one quarter of 927. This was done with 10 volumes, one to one, through the midlands and the ends. And then through the root area, we wanted to create a shadow. So what we did here was we worked with uh, two thirds of level eight, two thirds of level eight and one third of, uh, where are you? Ah, 713. Now in the collection, we actually did uh, 781, but I chose to use the one three because the ma mannequin had like a really horrible orangey warm base to it. So I wanted the, the primary color character in this to be the blue, so it creates as mute a base as possible. Um, if you haven't used Imagea, have a look online. We've got many little videos on, on this product. It is amazing. 
It's a permanent hair colour, uh, totally free of resorcinol, ammonia, uh, PPD. Um, it can cover up to 80% of uh, white hair and it can lighten natural hair up to three levels. It's a fantastic product and one of my go-to for when I'm toning the hair. So that was the colour process. Um, then this morning what I've done is I've just prepped the hair with um, the Fetalesia, which is the Imagea uh, leave-in conditioner. Light with a colour, enriched with pomegranate and quinoa, so very powerful antioxidants that have reconstructing properties. Um, it's fantastic because, again, it's a mannequin, the hair is not the best. Okay, so let's come on to the haircut. This is why we're all here, right? Um, Let's come on to the haircut. So the shape is pretty simple, very, very effective salon technique. Working with a slight disconnection through the top area, working with a fringe through the front, and then quite a square perimeter shape. What we did was we started by establishing the fringe section, working with a triangular uh, area that ends around the mid recession. Then through the sides, what we did was we worked it into a C curvature. So we created this C shape through here. And then through the back, we arched it from these outer points up into the center. Very, very simple. It was a little tricky to do the back, so we always worked with that center point. Hi, Doreen, welcome. It's quite nice having you guys joining. Uh, we've got Australia here, we've got the Philippines, I see we've got a bit of Taiwan in here as well. So thank you very much for joining. Okay, so let's start with the one length part. This is kind of the easiest area for us to work on. Now, we do need to be careful because if you look at the mannequin, the hair on the sides is pretty weak through here. So here we really need to work a little bit we have to work with some caution. So even though the original image is longer, I think it's going to look much nicer taking it up that little bit shorter. So I'm going to work through. Now as an idea, this is really where I need to work to, but I'm gonna take it up a touch shorter. So, by the way, feel free, if you have any questions, drop them into the comments. I'm gonna try my best to pick them up as we're going. If not, um, for sure, I will add my comments in later. If you're cu more curious about the colour, then don't hesitate to check our channel uh, where we have the full step-by-step -step of last week's session. So what I'm doing here is just to give me some more control, I'm going to isolate the front. I'm going to just totally ignore that for now just to make my life as easy as possible. I'm gonna start through the center back, tilt the head forward, so make sure it's arced forward. And we're just gonna work from the center outwards, like so. Like I've been saying to you guys before in some of the, the other videos, um, you know, I like to, I personally like to work the whole of one side before I move on to the other, you know, just to give me some discipline and control. Now, if I want to, I don't normally, but I will, for the sake of the, this, I'm going to click up each section. I'm going to go in, keeping everything square. I'm going to work with the, uh, the, the edge of the neck, and we're just going to work in with the points of the blades, like so. Perfect. So it's going to be a little bit bobesque, I guess. Obviously, you need to make sure that you know she's moist and wet when you're working, um, because you know the wetter she is, the easier it's going to be to take your sections, you know, and get in there and do what you need to do. So I like to use the the Fito uh, the Fito Lysia to keep her moist. Um, it's the best for her hair. Okay, let's just work through. Again, keeping everything square, right? Keeping it nice and square as I'm working through. But I'm being very careful not to cut this like a traditional bob shape. This is also very, very important because we don't want that kind of effect on this haircut. 
Okay, working on the last section. Just bring that down. Some of the hair underneath has dropped away, but I'm not panicking too much. I'm just going to work that through. Now, do feel free to ask any questions if you have them. It's quite nice that you've got an interaction here with, with us. So, uh, yeah, feel free to you know, jump in there with any points or questions that you may have. Okay, just going to bring the head up. She's a little bit stiff. And just check that shape. And we've got quite a nice little arc through the back. So, let's now continue on the other side. Keeping it dead easy. Nice and simple as we're working through. I'm going to work with my diagonal forwards like you would with any traditional one length shape. Working back over through the centre. Just tilt that forward. She's a little stiff today. There we go. And again, keeping it square. Working from the centre. Always working from the centre. We can let's do this in one, yeah. Straight down. Just working with the point of the blades. Hey, Marika. Oh, she's here. Marika is our social media queen, so I think she'll be moderating. Okay. Just going to finish off this section here. So just keep things very, very simple. Remember, the wetter she is, the easier she's going to be to work with. So keep her nice and moist when you're working. Okay, it's just okay. There's a little bit too much of a corner through here, so we're just going to cut that off. And basta. Let's just check that outline. And I don't know if you can see the colour is beginning to come through. This is a really difficult <laughs> colour for me to photograph. I don't know if you guys saw uh, last week, but we, we posted the picture and I was a bit like, oh, okay. Um, it was really hard to, to photograph, you know, and uh, I just forget it's such a challenge to, to work with your blonde, you know. All right, dead easy. Just working horizontally, combing it straight down, clip that up and away, you want to keep this square, like so, straight down, working with the line that's already there, goodbye, just cut it off. Okay. Fortunately, she's got plastic ears, so I don't need to worry too much about the recoiling of the ear area. And let's just do the same. Everything's just coming down to natural fall. Just work with it. You can see there's not so much hair coming off this area here. It's quite weak. Um, I don't know if, but can you see the buildup of the colour through here? And you see these beautiful soft highlights through the interior. I think it's, it's beautiful. You know, I love it because it really is a warm, lived-in colour. I, I personally, of course, it comes back to taste. I'm not such a big fan of, um, you know, big, fat, chunky stripes. You know, it's, uh, I think... You know, this technique that Zoe had created is really, really beautiful. Okay, same again, this side, horizontal, comb it down. Okay, she's a little bit too dry, so let's get her nice and moist again. Like so, beautiful. So days like today, don't mind doing a Facebook Live. It's, uh, I don't know how the weather is where you are, but it's damn miserable in Northern Europe. So it's quite nice uh, 
being in the house and creating beautiful hair. Okay, just finishing off that last section. So I'm curious if any of you guys have had a chance to play with our brand new eye blonde freehand. Are you excited to get your hands on it? Um, you know, are you are you you know? Tell us your stories. Uh, I, I'm so so curious. We were, I mean, we were really happy when we finally, finally launched this product. It was something that we we really needed. Um, we know that, you know, freehand colouring is not a, a trend, it's, it's normal now, you know, and it's been normal for quite some time. So uh, I think it was totally necessary to insert this uh, as a category of product, you know? Very, very necessary. Okay, so I'm just working through, just checking the balance. I think it's quite okay. There's nothing strange. She has got a bit of a weird, a weird kink in her hair. Yeah, I think we're good. Just a few tips as well, you know, when you are checking your, your outline, when you are checking your shape, you know, don't, uh, don't only just check it visually, uh, also check it uh, technically. Okay. So that's the underneath area now done. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to clip it away and I'm going to forget about it completely, like so. So this we're just going to ignore because the top is actually totally disconnected. Okay. And voila. work this way as well. Okay, so now what we need to do is we're going to work through the top area. We're going to work with a disconnected section um, through the crown. The objective here is to create a little bit of roundness but without it being too wild. So we're going to unclip the top and we're going to divide this in two sections. We're going to work just above the crown so, and I'm just going to totally ignore that. Okay, same on this side. Okay. So we're taking a, um, a radial section through this top area here. Like so, okay. So this is the whole of the underneath. This is where we are going to be working now. So we're going to take the center profile section like so. If you want, if it makes your life a little easier, what you can do is just twist it, click it, and that's it. Like so. That is our first section. So we're going to work through, bring this straight up, like so. Now in terms, some of you might be thinking, well what's the guide, what is the length? This is totally up to you and how you personalise the shape. I'm going to take quite a good bit off it because the hair has really zero substance. So I'm going to work with the shape I've got. Drop that down. Okay, this is quite a good length. Definitely don't want it any shorter, otherwise we're going to have a, a bit of a Rod Stewart thing going on. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring everything into this point, like so. One section. Over direct into the center. And cut off that corner. It's a very, very easy but very effective shape. Okay, let's just drop that down. Now what I'm expecting to see here is a curve. So, let's have a look. Yeah. 
you have a curve. You can see it wants to bevel into the head shape. Now what we can also do, let's not forget our discipline here, is work the other way. Bring it up and just check the shape. Beautiful, we have a curve. I'm just going to clean the curve just a touch. Okay, great. And just so I've got some control when I'm working, I'm going to isolate this side here that I've just cut. Let's just ignore it. And we're going to just clip that away. Like so. And then we're just going to do the same on the other side. Easy, breezy, beautiful. Okay. There we go. So satisfying cutting all that rubbish off. You know, there's nothing worse when you've just got all this hair just sitting here. It has no function, it has no value. You know, it's uh, someone taught me back in my, uh, back in the, my Sassoon days, someone always told me, I, th I thought it was very good. You know, when you're cutting, it's all about working with space. Uh, it's, you, you're working with quite a similar principle to uh, architecture. What I mean is that, you know, you're, you're working with a three-dimensional space or a three-dimensional uh, object, and you have to work within that, you know, within those zones or within that space to create a form. And, you know, sometimes you know, we, we have this obsession with clinging on to, <laughs> clinging on to the, the hair, when, it doesn't really have a purpose, it, it doesn't do anything to the shape, it doesn't make the shape look any nicer. Um, get rid, if it doesn't need to be there, just remove it. It's all about the shape. All right, so let's have a look. You can see I'm losing my discipline a touch through the back, so I'm just going to comb this in, just ignore it, like so. And now we're going to work on the top, nice and easy. Same kind of principle as the back. I'm going to lower this down so you can see a little bit better. I hope that's not too much. No, this is good. So do feel free to write into the comments if you have any questions, or any burning questions that you would like to ask us. Please don't hesitate. You know, we're here for you. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions or any stories, don't be afraid, we don't bite. Okay, let's move towards the front. Very easy. Continue working with our horizontal sections like so. I'm just going to turn the head so you can see a little better. I'll take off my glasses because they're a bit glary today. Okay. We're going to take the top part of the previously cut section, like so. And if you think about the shape, we started like this, now we're going like this. So we're actually working with a pivot around the head. Bring that straight up, keeping it lovely and square. Is a guide. I need a little bit more hair. It's always best if you're not sure, don't cut. <laughs> if you can't see the guide, don't cut it. Okay, let's bring that up. There we go. There she is. And we're just again working the points of the blades. If I need more control, more discipline, I'm just going to work in slightly smaller sections, and that's it. Let's just double check that shape, keeping it square, bringing it straight up. Yeah, there we go, voila. And then working into the next sections. Working towards the front, basically until you run out of hair. 
making sure this is very important though look look at the angle Ta -da! so here we're bringing everything back to this stationary point why you ask yes that's a great question it's because if we don't she's going to have dead short layers around the face it's very important to make sure that you know we're still building something up around the face yeah Next section, straight up, straight up, straight up, and pull up, get rid. Okay, let's have a look at the shape. And I'm expecting to see a bit of a point. Great, and we haven't cut out the color, so that's always good. Okay, so now let's move on to the next side. In fact, no, let's not. Let's just do a quick cross check. Think about it like this. I've pulled it all back into one point, so I'm expecting to see a beautiful curve. You know, cross checking is all about, you know, dusting, cleaning, refining. Um, cross checking is not about compensating for a really badly executed form, you know? So it's very important to make sure that you've got that shape in there. Perfect, so you can see there's just a little, a little too much of a point just there. But apart from that, I'm very happy. Okay, let's move on to the next side. I'm now going to take some of the hair from the center Going to totally ignore that, leave that out. So we now have the central area that we just cut, and now I need to take some of the hair from the back. So watch very carefully, ignore the underneath, clip that away. There's a previous section, so on the round of the head, let's just make sure I've got enough hair. Better to have too much than not enough. Voila. There's a shape. Let's take the central area. Voila. Perfect. Now let's move the start cutting in the front. Now, of course, maybe you, you struggle with your discipline. Don't panic, just clip away. If you, if you struggle being disciplined when you're working, clip away your sections, make your life easy. You know, so, there we go. Take that there, there we go, voila. We are good to go. Combing that straight up. And basta. Let's get rid. Being a little bit naughty and twisting a little bit through here. So I just need to, to be careful not to get too excited. Can't have too much excitement, right? Okay. Again, same principle, straight up. Watch in the arm position and remove the corner. So any of you guys that are just joining, I do see the numbers are fluctuating a little. Thank you for joining. My name is John. I am the Global Education Manager for Elgon Cosmetic. Um, Welcome to our second live of Gentle Energy, which is the spring summer portion of the collection. Uh, last week we did the colour, showcasing our brand new eye blonde freehand a decolorant, which is a clay based lightener enriched with um, EC oil complex, which is designed to. Um, as the main cosmetic ingredient during the lightening process. Uh, we did a beautiful freehand colour technique 
reinterpretation of highlights. So we did a build up of traditional forehead highlights and then working with this balayage through the lengths in the end. We, uh, the idea was to create this kind of lived in um, 70s feel and we didn't want to do like a, a traditional uh, balayage because it's done, you know, everyone's done it. <laughs> it's, it's kind of, everyone's worn the hat. So we wanted to do something that we thought would be, that'd be interesting and something that would be very usable and wearable in the salon, you know, and um, I think you'll agree that I think the result is totally beautiful. Okay, so the collar, we didn't do this on the, the shoe. It's a little strange, right, when I'm like hiding behind her head. Uh, uh, it's, um, we didn't do this on the shoe, but I'm going to do this today because if you look at the hair, um, I'm liking how the shape's sitting, I'm liking how the colour's looking, um, but there is just a touch too much happening in this bottom area here. Why? Because uh, the mannequin doesn't have so much weight on the sides, so there's a bit of a disproportion between the side and the back. So here we need to just work a little more with removing less weight. Okay, so, but first I want to work on the fringe. And can you see the colour as the hair is starting dry, to dry out? Can you see what's beginning to happen? You see he's got these beautiful delicate highlights popping out through the top and then that gorgeous build up of blonde through the ends. I think it's absolutely stunning. Okie dokie. Let's move on to the fringe. So the fringe is already, the section was already taken. It's been pre-cut very crudely. That was done deliberately because um, for last week's live. So let's have a look, see what's going on. So we're just going to work through, can you keep it quite blunt? I don't want to layer the fringe per se, because again, inspo is the 70s. So, you know, we want a fringe that's got that weight to it, but we don't want it like super, super graphic or, you know, super perfect. It needs to be lived in. I think the 70s, you know? So, just gonna work in. Keeping everything square, right? Huh? So same principle same principle as the length. Split that in half, forget about it, bring it down. And again, not too short, yeah? We need to keep enough for it to spring up. Just cut that away. A lot of tension, like maximum tension, but still working with the elevation. Yeah, we're working to one finger's depth elevation. Thanks, Doreen. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a beautiful blend of, uh, of colours. I think it's absolutely amazing. Yeah, Zoe did a, a great job on the shoot with, with this colour. The, the model, <laughs> she wasn't the easiest. Um, yeah, she was quite challenging. Very sweet, but very, very challenging. And her hair, even more challenging. I mean, uh, you know, it was previously highlighted, very, you know, naturally quite fine. Um, you know, she didn't want the warmth, but she didn't want it cool. Uh, it was a real classic salon situation. You know, one of those situations where you're like, you go to the dispensary and you're like, oh man, why, why me? It was one of those. But, you know, Zoe did a, uh, she did a fantastic job, really. Okay, so just working through, keeping it nice and clean. I mean, with the mannequin, it was dead difficult because you know, the, the mannequin, the texture is actually perfect. The texture is very similar to what we had on the set. The color, not so much. I mean, the color is like super orangey when it comes out the box. So you have to like, I don't know, pre-color it. Believe it or not, I actually already pre-shampooed the hair with, uh, I don't think I have it. No, I did pre-shampoo the hair though with uh, the anti-red shampoo from Color Care, and I actually used uh, the eye care, um, the the mineral green, um, just to kill off the red as uh, as much as possible. 
Um, and if you look at the mannequin, for, uh, the, the mannequin that we did it on uh, last week, um, or this mannequin, you see the, the, the difference in the color is quite amazing. It was a lot of work. Fortunately, when we do it on real hair, it's very easy. Okay, so still keeping it nice and square. Building up the corners, keeping the tension. This is also very, very important. Keep the tension. Oh. Chop that down, keeping it square. I always have a habit, you know, of sometimes I keep one side a little longer. So I always need to go back through and just double check, refine, refine, refine. It's always better to keep it too long than to cut it too short. Okay. So just check, I'm using the camera as my mirror. And the, the fringe is looking good. You can see it's just a touch longer here. So we, we're going to just dust that away. And now moving on to the last section. It's always dead important though, just to make sure, you know, even if you are doing it live, make sure that you're totally in front of your sections. I always, 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 always split everything in half. It gives me as much control as I can possibly have, you know? Just coming it right down, square, the Keeping it nice and flat, get the comb out of the way. Just drop that away. You can see it's a little messy, but it's all good. I'm not panicking. Let's go in. It's just a bit too much of a corner in the middle there. Okay, let's do the same on the other side. And I'm really, I'm loving, 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 loving this colour. As it's starting to dry through, it's really, yeah, I think it's really beautiful. So next week, we're going to be doing uh, our last uh, live looks. Uh, next week, we will be doing uh, Eye Blonde, which is um, our beautiful full head lightening application. Uh, of course, it's very difficult to do it on a mannequin because mannequins are already pre-treated. So we're not going to do a bleaching technique, but we're gonna do the toning technique and talk you through the bleaching technique. Um, I think it should be quite interesting. Um, and then go through the haircut. It's, it's super, super beautiful. Now I am going to just work a bit of a layer through the top. Why not? Just to dilute it a bit. So you see here, that there should be sitting here. That's what's keeping that graphicness on the shape. I do want to keep it a little softer. So let's just go in and get rid. I'm not going too short though. Yeah, we're just keeping the elevation just on the end. I'm gonna over direct everything into the middle. Okay, do the same on the other side. Okay, uh, uh, uh. oh, I have my concentrating face again. This is not good. Thinking too hard. All right. Let's just check that shape. I think it's looking pretty okay. I like the length, I like the shape. Uh, I don't think there's really anything else we need to we need to do with it. Uh, the only thing we need to really work on is the back because it's the, the back is just not really working right now. Let's just check the front. Always making sure we're checking for any overhang, yeah? So I can see there's like, a little bit here from what well, there's a little here from where we uh, where we cut it previously we did like a rough cut that needs to obviously go because it doesn't look the best just make sure that it's because uh... this is also very important uh, like making sure that you've got that the division within the fringe and the outline it's quite easy sometimes to start taking it back too deep 
um, you know, or it's maybe slightly feathery, or you start making a layer through here. Uh -uh, this is not what we are, you know, what we want to do. Okay, let's have a look. So this side is quite okay. It's a little bit, that is all good. It's just, just a bit through here, there. So I'm just going to go through. Not taking all of it. Just cut it off. There we go. That's done. Okay, so the last thing I want to do now is just work a little bit more with uh, the weight through the back. Let's just check this outline. Yeah, I just want to work a little bit more through here because it's a bit too heavy at the moment and it, the, the weight proportion is, is not entirely balanced. So let's just work through. This is not something that we did in the, the step by step, but I think it's something that's quite nice to show you. So you can see optically, look, look at the difference in terms of weight. What we're going to do here, we're going to totally, totally ignore the side. We don't need to even think about it. What's the point in moving, removing weight when it's, uh, <laughs> when there's already a lack of it? I am now going to isolate the top taking just a curved section, like so. Voila. Now, what we're going to do, we're gonna work through, we're gonna take just thin strips of hair, like so. And we're gonna do a very nice, easy technique. It's called brick cutting. I'm sure you've seen it. It's super old school, but very effective. Don't think I've done this for years. We're not doing this on every section because we'll end up removing too much weight. So we alternate. Next section, we leave. We keep the weight in there, yeah? If we don't do that, we will probably lose too much weight from the hair. So, same principle, we go through, ignore the hair that's just been done. Okay, and one, two. And we're taking in, we're going in quite deep through the interior, yeah? I'm not so worried about that. Okay, and then next section. And I mean, another way that you could do this is a twist cutting technique. It's also very, very effective. So you could also actually go this way. Just turn you. And you can go one, two, three. Like so. Let's just check the balance. And I can see, I don't know if you can see already, but you can see it's started to loosen up the shape now. It's just opened it up a little more, um, to make it look a little bit less uh, boxy through the back area. Now let's continue through the other side, keeping it quite crude. So again, look at the shape. You can see, oh no, you can't see, sorry. If you look, can you see here, there's like a gap. Is that not a, is that a slivering technique? Oh, I love that, slivering like a slug. Not necessarily slivering, it's uh, maybe a, a, you could say it's a slicing technique, but it's not really slicing because it's, if we're slicing, we're going in like one motion. Here we're intentionally cutting out whole pieces of hair, you know? So it's really more of a, a brick, a brick cutting uh, technique. I'm isolating the front, don't think about it. And just tilt her over. And let's go through. Same principle. Here's the weight. Let's leave the top for now. Like so. And we're gonna work the other way. Diagonal back. We're going diagonal back because we want to direct the weight in 
through the back, yeah? And creating that 70s feel. So, look in. Look at where the weight is. Actually, most of the weight is sitting here, not here. So this is really where we need to focus. So, one, two, three, four. Like so, comb it. And look, look, look how much softer this is looking here. Yeah? Drop it away. Next section, ignore. Next section, same again. Like so. Can you also see, look, as the hair is drying, look how amazing this color is. I think it's fantastic. Beautiful. You know, and it's not that like super fake blonde, you know, it's beautiful. Okay, let's take out the side. Let's just see what's going on with it. Okay, so we've got something kind of nice going on here. Got a nice shape. Just getting a little bit on the dry side. So we're gonna just make her nice and moist again. Keep it nice and damp. She's much easier to, to work with when she's wet. Uh, when she's dry, you know, it's um, it can be quite challenging to really, you know, we're working with movement, uh, you know, and you know, if it's too dry, it's, it's just not gonna work. You, so, you know, keeping it wet, and keeping it moist, uh, when we work in with the diffuser, it's gonna bring out that movement, you know? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by just, not necessarily on the top, because I want the flatness through here. So we're, the top I'm not focused on, it's more the ends. So I'm going to start with the Feet Elysia. This is uh, a leave-in conditioner from Elgon Green. Um, so enriched with, um, enriched with the quinoa. Um, it's got building properties to it. It's also packed full of antioxidants. So it's going to help just give the hair a bit of control as I am working. Okay. Now, ideally, if this was in the salon and I'm going to work with diffusing the hair, in all honesty, I would normally actually wet the hair down completely. So typically when I am working with uh, Afro hair uh, or I'm working with, um, yeah, like super, super curly hair. Uh, you know how it is, like when you're cutting the hair and it starts to dry, um, you know, you're pulling the hair straight. So if you just wet it, it's, it's never going to lay the same because it's, you've been pulling it for an hour, you know? So I think it's also dead important to, um, yeah, do you really want to reanimate the hair, or reanimate the curls? then you really want to be, uh, you know, wetting it down beforehand. Okay, so now we're going to mix. Number four, a fix Tame It. Tame It is uh, a smoothing cream. Uh, it's packed full of soya active complex. All of the products have it. It works like a time controlled, time released uh, cosmetic ingredient, um, which has reconstructing properties. It's a main cosmetic ingredient. Uh, and also the entire line has got a UV protection, so it will help with color durability. We're mixing number four, which is Tame It, our anti-frizz cream, with number five, which is our filler cream, which is a volumizer. We're going to mix them together, work it into the hands so they can fuse together. And I'm just gonna work that through, just to reanimate the, the form. And then we are going to, um, we're going to diffuse it. We're going to diffuse it and then just refine the finish um, with an iron, with a flat iron, just to really bring this alive. So you can see everything's reanimated again. We've got some nice flatness through the top. Normally, if I'm honest with you, I'm not a big fan of um, diffusing. I always think, personally, I always think the hair is better when it's left actually under a heater. It was left to dry on its own. Certainly when I worked in the salon, I would very rarely use a diffuser. But, in, but for the sake of a life, we will. So, and this is why this is one of my best friends because it doesn't disturb the hair too much. We're gonna start through the top, just to keep the flatness up. What we don't wanna be doing 
it's going from underneath and then it ends up looking like a big mushroom on the head. It's definitely not uh, the look we're trying to create. So what we've done is uh, we're using a high heat but a low, low speed. And if I want to, I am just working with the fingers just a little bit, just to open the shape up a bit. And you should also start seeing how the shape is forming as it's drying. For me, this is one of my favorite tools. Uh, if I'm ever working with Curly, this is one of my favorite tools because it's, you know, it's not, look at the hair. It's not blowing all over the show. And um, yeah, for me, I, I hate it. You know, when the hair is done with a wave or a curl, and it's just dead, dead fluffy. I mean, it just looks terrible. So here we are just encouraging a bit more movement. Let me just bring it up. But we're not going crazy. And you should start to see everything, the, the colour starting to come to life. And then, um, like I said, if you want to see the colour in action or you're curious about the formula, uh, check back this video once we are finished because we'll do a recap. We did a recap at the beginning. Uh, and also we, uh, we did the technique live last week. Now also, just another tip, when you are diffusing, don't ever dry the hair 100% or don't over dry it. So I also quite like to just leave a bit of moisture still in the hair, um, just because if you, again, it, it stops the risk of you over drying your hair, over drying the hair. Let's just check the shape. That is looking quite nice. I'm gonna just tilt the head back a little bit, just so I can get underneath around the neckline. Do feel free, if you have any questions, don't be afraid to pop them into the comments. You know, what you'll see is over the next few weeks, and certainly with Gentle Energy, um, you know, we wanted to really focus in on, you know, quick, effective salon techniques. So things that you can do right out the box in the salon, because, you know, as, as we know, um, you know, uh, salons are not able to operate at the same capacity as they were before. I talked to friends of mine back in uh, the UK, because the UK is about to reopen. Uh, thank you, Tag, it's so good to see your lovely face. Uh, yeah, we're, you know, we're back in the UK, they're starting to reopen. Here in the Netherlands, the salons have already been open for, uh, I think, for almost a month now. Honestly speaking, here it's, it's not been so bad, uh, but of course, there is still a, you know, it still is a PPE, you know, taking, you know, being careful. Uh, and one of the things really is that, you know, we're not able to operate salons in the same way we were before. So, you know, less staff, longer appointments, um, maybe no technical services, uh, longer spaces between the appointments, sorry. Um, so, you know, we really have to think in different ways. And, Certainly, in terms of education as well, you know, techniques, it's, it's great to have beautiful, intricate techniques, but they've got to be really easy and, and quick. You know, we don't have the luxury of time now, you know? Okay, so we're getting there, we're almost done. I'm not too worried about this, don't panic. This, we're gonna distress it a little bit more. Yes, Limwell, I love the blow dryer as well. It's very, very handy. I don't go anywhere without this. Now, I've tried many, many different dryers, <laughs> as we all have, and I just never found the one that was right for me, you know, and uh, this one is perfect because my style also as a hairdresser, you know, uh, I'm not, um, not a big fan of, you know, like over manicured and over styled hair. It's just not me uh, at all. As a hairdresser, you know, my style as a hairdresser is, um, you know, working with it. Let the haircut do the work for you. Now, that's the wonders of having a magnetic hairdryer. 
No, but you know what? I, I'm a big believer in, you know, if your haircut is good, then you don't need to, like, spend hours blow drying it. You know, it's, um, but then that's a testament of a good haircut. You know, I also, I can't bear, and it's quite common, you know, you tend to find in markets, you get amazing stylists, people that are amazing at blow drying, but actually their blow drying is concealing a terrible haircut, you know, and it's, I think that's also something, blow drying itself is an art, you know, styling is an art. Okay, so we're almost there. Just gonna finish off this side. I can see looking at the numbers, diffusing isn't everyone's cup of tea, but that's all good. I'm just going to finish this off here. And can you see the colour now as it's starting to come through? The colour's amazing. No, it is absolutely beautiful. What do you think? It's definitely got that 70s vibe, right? And thank you, Doreen. It really is truly 70s. See, the colour is kind of dumb, but it's not too dumb. It's these beautiful tones running through it. It's got that fantastic shine. No, it's beautiful. So here, this is now where I'm going to start disturbing the hair. I'm, I'm, I'm using my fingers there. Eh? So don't want to be using a brush or, I mean, you could do this with a, a wide tooth comb. The problem with doing it with that though is you could end up brushing it out too much, you know? And of course, there are two finishes that we also created. So if you look on our Facebook uh, or our Instagram channel, you'll see uh, that the alternative look that was created by Marco Girotti for this look. Okay. I think this is looking good. What do you guys think? I'm gonna just move the, the comments so I can actually see what I'm doing. There we go. I think the shape's looking quite nice. Now, of course, also here we're working on a light base, like we did on the shoot. And we're working in with, you know, quite a quite a light base. But as a color technique, it works on every base you work on. You just need to adapt it to what you're working on. Don't forget that, you know, the result is <laughs> what you have plus what you apply equals what you get. So, I mean, remember the the freehand, eyebrow freehand, is able to lighten the hair up to seven levels. Uh, my, my top tip would be that, you know, if you would ne maybe normally use 20 volumes, you go with 30 volumes. Uh, if you use 30, go 40. Um, so always up, I would always recommend you up the developer. That ensures that you're going to get that, that lift. Because even though the product isn't designed to dry out, it is a clay-based product, so <laughs> like a wool product, so it is going to after a while. So, you know, I always will up my developer. All right, so I think we're, we're pretty much done. I was gonna use a tong, but I, I kind of like it without the tong. I think it's, it's kind of beautiful. What do you guys think? What do you think? It's kind of beautiful about it. Ah, oh, thanks, Lim. Well, you finally see the shape and the colour. That's great. All right, so let's have a quick look. See how she's doing. Still a little bit of moisture through the front, but I think it's it's all good. I'm not really too worried about it. What do you guys think? Do you like it? What do you think of the colour? It's come up absolutely beautiful. I don't know if you can really see, but there's that beautiful, look, you know the definition, you've got these gorgeous little, almost like baby lights through the surface, through the top, and then building out into this kind of worn out, groaning uh, effect on the midlands and the ends. And if you look, it's, it's throughout the whole look. So you've got these like 
beautiful ribbons of colour going through the top. And you can make this work on any colour level. So, I know it's not only for, um, you know, not only for European hair, you know, it's also, you know, e even in Asia, I think if you did like a, if you had like a level five and you took the lighter pieces up to like a level seven or a level eight, it would look absolutely beautiful, you know? So, you know, sometimes we have this obsession with going as bright and as clean and brighter is better, but no, it isn't. And like ash and silver doesn't suit everyone, you know? I think sometimes there's something way more classy about keeping something more organic. And I, I think this looks fair, way cooler, you know? So, okay, that concludes our look. I'm going to do a little more work on this um, before I post the photo. So if you want to see the final, final image, check out our Facebook page where we are going to show you the, the very final, uh, final look. I thank you so much for joining. Uh, it was a blast. It certainly was a blast for me. I hope it was a blast for you. And uh, yeah, if you want to come back and see the video, you will see it on our Connect by Elgon uh, YouTube channel. Uh, and join us same time, same place next week where we are going to go through our second look of gentle energy. Thank you very much. Enjoy your day, your evening, your morning, wherever you are in the world. Stay safe and I see you soon. God bless. Bye bye.